there and welcome to my channel where we discuss all the tips and tricks necessary for you to live a life of adventure. Today we're going to be discussing six killer trekking pole tips for you to use while out hiking and backpacking. From how to adjust your poles to the perfect height, how to walk with them, and all the other deets that have helped me to successfully through hike my own original wilderness sprouts. So be sure to stay tuned until the end. And as always, if you find this content helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So there's a lot of reasons why you might consider using trekking poles, whether hiking or backpacking. Maybe it's to give you extra balance. Maybe it's to help you cross, you know, big fords safely. Maybe it's to give you extra balance, increase your efficiency, make fording big rivers easier, even to use as poles for your tent. Um, you know, there's plenty of different pros and cons, and it's honestly something that I'll probably discuss in a separate video. Today is more tips on how to use them if you've decided that trekking poles are a tool that you would like to use while out hiking or backpacking. So tip number uno is how to adjust your poles properly and what height you should use them at. Um, you know, this is kind of the first one. You can't really go anywhere without actually adjusting it. Um, so the first thing that you should kind of consider or that I think about when I'm trying to decide how high to make my poles, especially if it's a new set um, and you don't know what height to make them quite yet, is that when you're walking, you want your arm to make a shape like an L. So you don't want your arm way down here if your pole is on the ground. You don't want your arm way up here because um, that's just not efficient and it's also not going to, you know, it's going to use a lot more energy when you're trying to like set them down um, or it just won't give you as much balance. So you want to start with that. The nice thing about most poles, so not necessarily the Z ones, but the ones that have clips, uh, like my poles, I can change the height pretty easily, um, is you can actually adjust them when you're going uphill versus downhill. So if you're going up a hill, you can make them shorter. That way your arm is still in that nice L shape and, you know, as you can see mine should maybe be a little bit higher actually um, or if you're going downhill you can make them a little bit shorter that way same thing you can maintain that L shape so once you figure out where you need your pole to be for an L you're going to want to adjust it so um, again if you're by the kind that are the fold up Z kind where they have the strap in the middle and you just pull them out and unbend them kind of like a tent pole then you're going to want to make sure that you buy them at the correct height so I would suggest trying them out or buying them from a place where you can return them if they're a little bit too tall or a little bit too short. Or even measure, you, you know, you could stand and measure from your hand to the ground to help you find the correct height when you buy those. Um, personally, I would buy a kind like this. So this is one of the black diamond um, trekking poles. But even like really cheap, like the crown point ones on Amazon still have this adjustable clip as well. So, and the nice thing is most of them have a measurement system on here so once you figure out where to put them the first time you don't have to necessarily check it every time you can just go to that height so when I get out of the car I know that I always want mine to be at 140 centimeters um, so you can just unclip it and either pull it out or in you know once you get to a certain point it tells you to stop so that's about as high as I can go on this setting um, just because otherwise you pull it too far out it could snap um, there are on most poles multiple levels so if i wanted to make mine a little bit longer than that i could pull out this one down below i personally would pull out the top one first so the thickest setting just because that's going to be a little bit stronger especially if you have a pretty light pole um, you know if i were to keep this one collapsed like that and use this bottom setting that's fine but notice it's quite a bit thinner so, you know, I do a lot of rock hopping um, and hiking off trail and that kind of thing where my poles get stuck and stuff. And I try to be pretty careful, but I would rather use this thicker setting because um, I just think it's less likely to snap. I mean, I don't really have anything to prove that, but that's just kind of what I do. Uh, the other thing to note, and you know, maybe I'll make a video too about how to pick the trekking pole when you want to buy them, or these don't bend, sorry, they snap before they'll bend, but they don't bend very easily. So as long as you're careful, you should be good. So, yep, so just pick your setting, then once you have it, then you can go back to it every time. So it makes it nice and easy, nice and fast. All right, so step number two is how to use your strap. So most poles should come with some sort of strap. Um, some might be more like the ski straps. Uh, my old poles that I had were much more like those little cheap with the buckle at the bottom, you can kind of adjust them. Um, not as comfortable to use, and honestly, I didn't use them very much. I use my strap much more now that I have these nice cushiony straps, just because half the time they're in the way anyways. Um, but straps actually have a really important purpose. If you are in more difficult terrain, so say you're fording 
um, a pretty fast flowing river, especially early, you know, in the summer, late spring. Or here in places like Alaska or Canada, where there's a lot of glacier fed rivers that flow pretty fast in the afternoon. Um, it's pretty important to have that strap. That way you kind of have a little bit more stability. You're also less likely to lose your poles if your hand slips. Um, same thing when I'm crossing more difficult terrain in the mountains. So especially like steep snow fields, I'll definitely make sure to use my strap that way. Um, if my hand slips, my pole isn't gonna go all the way down the mountain, never gonna be seen again. Um, but if you're just like walking on a fairly flat trail and you just want it to be more efficient, then you don't always necessarily need to use it. Um, but how should you use it? So a lot of people might think to stick it around like that. Um, and honestly, this one's kind of uncomfortable. So usually how I use the strap is if you just have it laying flat, I just stick my hand in like that and then just grab the pole. And so the nice thing is your wrist kind of rests all, on it a little bit. So especially if you're walking on a little bit easier terrain and you're just kind of to the point where you're just kind of motoring along, uh, you can kind of just use that to rest. Um, you're not using your pulse quite as much anyways. You're just trying to make your body a little bit more efficient and then you just go along. So that's tip number two. All right, so if you're getting a lot of value out of this video, be sure to hit that like button, let me know. Otherwise, I just assume that maybe this isn't helpful for people. So uh, if you like this, you wanna see more videos like this, definitely let me know by hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so tip number three is actually how to walk with your poles. Um, so it might seem pretty obvious and maybe you'll find something that works well for you just from trial and error. But how I do it is instead of moving my whole arm like this, like way up and down or way swinging, you know, I want to save energy and be efficient. That's kind of one of the main reasons to use trekking poles is just to make your hiking more efficient, use less energy, um, kind of balance everything out. So rather than waving my arms around a lot, I actually use a very small hand wrist motion and barely lift my pole off the ground. So when I walk, I'll just lift my trekking pole just a little bit off the ground. You know, it depends on how many rocks there are, but if there's not that many rocks, especially it's pretty flat, um, I'll just lift it a little bit off the ground, swing my wrist, so you can see my wrist is just moving to make it swing like a pendulum. Swing my wrist so my pole swings forward, touch it back to the ground, keep walking. Um, so if I were gonna walk, it'd be something like this. You know, it kind of depends on where you're going, what you're doing, that kind of thing. This works the best on trails that are well built, um, you know, not a lot of obstructions, well maintained. Um, especially with there's not a lot of grass, that kind of thing, but you can use it in a lot of situations and it just really saves a lot of that energy because when you're swinging your arms like this, you know, or picking it way off the ground, that's just going to burn more calories. Um, so yeah, that's tip number three. All right, so tip number four is the timing of how you move your trekking poles with your body. So this will kind of depend on if you use one or two trekking poles just a little bit. It'll also depend on the length of your stride and how fast you're walking. And it'll also depend on the situation and what you're just comfortable with in general. So the general rule of thumb for how to walk with trekking poles is to time it with your opposite leg. So when you move your left leg, this is my left, by the way, move your right hand pole at the same time and the same thing. Then when you move your right leg, I don't know if you can see that, move your left hand pole. So that becomes kind of like that same motion. If you have horses or dogs, kind of like when they're trotting, so you're moving opposites together. Um, and that's just, you know, it's obviously pretty efficient. That's how a lot of animals walk and move. Um, so that's a, definitely a good place to start out. From there, you can adjust it a little bit. So a lot of times when I get moving, especially if I'm walking faster, I'll kind of do an every other. So I'll take two steps for every one trekking pole that I move. So it'll end up always being timed with the same leg. For example, if I am wanting to time it with my left leg, I have the kind of same rhythm and timing um, to move it together. And it's a little bit hard to see on that, but you'll kind of find what works for you. And then the third option really is to move your poles together. So same thing, you could do this with every step. I do that if I'm going up a very steep, steep hill, especially with a heavy backpack on where I'm you know, it's steep, I'm close to the top, I just want a jam buster up to the top and get there, and I'm taking quick steps, then I will move both my poles, and that's kind of exaggerated, I'll move both my poles with every step to help me up that hill. Or if you're going up, you know, a steeper incline, but it's not like straight up, then you could just time it with every other step where when you move one leg, you mo move both poles with that one leg. 
and then take another step and then move, move both poles with that other same leg. Um, so those are kind of the different options. The point being is you want it to come into kind of a rhythm. You don't just want it to be kind of like moving your poles whenever and wherever you want, kind of willy-nilly. You're timing it. And ideally, if you're walking over a long distance, it'll also kind of become timed with your breathing. So it all is kind of in a sync and a rhythm. And eventually you'll be able to fall into that. And um, for through hikers and long distance hikers especially, that becomes important over time to save energy and become more efficient. So as you're walking, you get into that rhythm that you can maintain over quite a long time without having to stop. Um, so that's kind of how I walk um, with my trekking poles. All right. Tip number five is your baskets. So I did want to mention this. Um, I do see people, and I've been guilty of this, of not having baskets on your poles. So baskets are, I don't know if I can get mine off, they are these little things that go on the tips of your trekking poles. So these are summer baskets. Summer baskets, so there's just these little things that fit on the tip. Um, and the kind of the reason they're there is to block rocks. Obviously, if you are hiking in a lot of snow, you're snowshoeing, skiing, you're gonna have those big winter baskets. So if you're using winter baskets, the whole point is like flotation. They help keep your poles from sinking way down into the snow. Summer baskets don't have quite as big of a function, but you should still have summer baskets on. And the point being is if you're hiking with other people, it's really just a safety precaution and it's polite to have baskets on your poles. That way, you know, if you're going along and something happens, which I've never really heard of this, but uh, you know, it could happen. If you fall backwards or someone walks really close to you or whatever and there's an accident, uh, you don't want to stab through them. So that'll just stop your pole a lot earlier from doing more damage. So it is good to have summer baskets on. There are a few occasions where I'll take my baskets off. So it's really nice if you have trekking poles where you can take the baskets off easily. And that is because if I'm hiking on snow fields during the early summer season, um, so like when I threw hiked through Colorado and the San Juans this last June, um, I had to cross a lot of really steep snow fields. And unfortunately, I was probably not as prepared as I should have been. I did not have an ice axe. And so I took the baskets off of my poles. That way I could really stick my poles down in the snow with each step to give me more stabilization. So I had both my poles, I had both my baskets on, and every time you know, I went, I'd stick my pole in, stick my other pole in, and take a step. Um, and that just helped me feel a bit more comfortable on some of those pretty steep snow fields. Not ideal, but it could be used if you're just, if you come to some terrain that you weren't expecting to be quite as snowy as you thought it would be. So that's another way that you can kind of think about using those baskets. All right, tip number six. Should you use one or two trekking poles? So this is again going to be a bit of personal preference. A lot of times I see, I've seen uh, hikers that are from the East Coast seem to prefer just using one trekking pole, whereas hikers from the West Coast tend to use two. I think some of that, just from talking to different hikers, is that in the West, there tends to be more exposure, I guess. Um, I know when I hiked the Colorado Trail, I talked to some hikers from the East Coast that had one, and they added a second pole, whether it's just a tree branch or an actual pole, just to make them feel a little bit more secure on some of those big open hills above tree lines, like in the Collegiate West and that kind of thing. Um, it really is going to depend on you. You know, some of the cons to carrying two poles instead of one is obviously you have more weight, especially if you have a tent that doesn't use trekking poles to hold it up, or you have a tarp that only uses one pole, you might not need two. Or if you're hiking in an area that's pretty tame, so like the Resurrection Pass Trail here in Alaska, um, honestly, it's fairly flat, a lot of it, or not necessarily flat, but at least well graded in the summer. So maybe you don't need two poles on that kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of times where if I'm just kind of marching along on a pretty flat path, I won't always even use two poles. But if you're walking on a pretty rocky trail, especially if you have a heavy backpack, um, you know, you're packing out for a long resupply um, or whatever, then you might want to have two poles just because it gives you more balance and stability. And again, might make you feel some more secure on some of those like knife edge and steeper type walks. I definitely would use two poles if you're hiking somewhere that's very snowy. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I fall down a lot, especially in the snow. So two poles just gives me a lot more of that stability to help catch myself and keep myself propped up. Um, especially again, going back to those deep snow fields, if you are a, you know, not very smart like me and you don't bring an ice axe and you definitely will want two poles for that. All right guys, so that's all I have for this week. 
you know, if you found this video to be helpful, definitely know by hitting that like button. And um, if you want to see more videos like this, you know, you're looking to take your backpacking or hiking up a notch, or maybe you're just getting started, then let me know. You know, my goal is to help as many people as possible get out and enjoy nature and feel safe out in the outdoors, as well as be equipped and well prepared so that you can live that life of adventure.